Hi, my name is Matthew Weirt and I'm Professor and Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom. And I want to talk to you about the way in which the criminal law is used against people living with HIV and with AIDS. Uh, all across the world, countries are using the criminal law as a response to HIV when HIV is first and foremost a public health issue which demands a public health response. It is not a legal problem that is capable of a legal resolution. Before the mid-1990s, when treatment became available in large parts of the world, there was relatively little criminalization. And the reason was is that people who discovered that they were living with HIV had priorities that were not about seeking revenge or going to the police and getting justice. They were concerned about getting well and accessing health care when that was available. Since the mid-1990s, with the uh, advent of antiretroviral treatment in large parts of the world, there has been an upsurge in criminalization. And this is a paradox in a way. You would have thought that living well with HIV, being able to live with HIV, would mean that people would stop seeing it as quite such a serious thing and something certainly which should be uh, the subject of a criminal prosecution. But that's not the case. Uh, in fact, it's got worse and worse and worse. And this is largely because, I think, uh, that the stigma associated with HIV hasn't gone away. In fact, the stigma associated with HIV infection is, in many cases, as bad as it has been. And when people are diagnosed with a condition which leads, as we know, to uh, marginalization, to social exclusion, to the experience of discrimination in relationships, in the workplace, in the provision of services, and in the provision of health care, you can perhaps well understand why people would feel aggrieved and that they have experienced a harm and a wrong which deserves a criminal legal response. But we need to think very critically about that. We need to think about the way the criminal law feeds into that stigma. If we think about the fact as we come up to World AIDS Day on uh, December the 1st this year, uh, the headlines that we get in our tabloid newspapers are not generally across the year about the fact that HIV is being successfully treated, that people who are living with HIV on effective treatment are able to suppress their viral loads to such a level that there have been no uh, studies which have demonstrated uh, that HIV is, can be transmitted uh, by somebody who's got an undetectable viral load. As we, we don't get those stories, we don't get uh, the good news stories, we don't get stories about the fact that HIV transmission is being suppressed and that there is an effective health story around HIV, what we get is headlines which have AIDS assassin, AIDS monster. The sensationalist press that we get reinforces the idea that people living with HIV are irresponsible, that they are criminals, and that they should be dealt with in the same way as anybody else. What we've got to do is address this, and we've got to do it very soon, and we've got to take it extremely seriously. Because the fundamental problem, as I said at the beginning, is that the, the criminalization, the use of the criminal law, uh, will not solve uh, the world HIV and AIDS crisis. Criminalization does not cure HIV. Good public health interventions uh, cure HIV. Effective uh, efforts at reducing stigma, reducing discrimination, minimizing uh, those things are critical to an effective HIV response. And this has been recognized by experts across the world. The United Nations Joint Program on AIDS, UNAIDS, the Global Commission on HIV and the Law, the Open Society Foundations, the International Planned Parenthood Federation, and many, many, many other organizations have recognized that the use of the criminal law should be extremely limited. There may be cases where people have used HIV as a weapon, where they've used it like a knife or a bullet in order to hurt somebody. And in those situations, these organizations recognize that there may be a very limited use for the criminal law. But it's much more expansive than that, and we've got to narrow it down. Uh, there is an overextensive use of the criminal law, and it can only harm HIV prevention efforts. So the message I'd like to leave you with today, as we come up to World AIDS Day, is that if we are serious about HIV, if we're serious about using the law as a tool for 
um, HIV prevention and for reducing the discrimination uh, experienced by people living with HIV is that we must all come together to recognize that there must be an evidence-based response which isn't grounded in media sensationalism, which doesn't assume that people living with HIV are irresponsible and that they want to hurt people. The evidence shows that people living with HIV are responsible people who want to ensure as much as anybody else that there is an end to the HIV epidemic. So if we can take that message forward, that would be a really good result. Thank you very much for listening.